Uh, I contracted Lyme disease from my mom. Uh, she was bit by a tick as a teenager and became very, very ill and was hospitalized and was never diagnosed because nobody really knew about Lyme disease here in Utah uh, back, back in the 60s. And, uh, and so she uh, had all four of us. And when she was pregnant with me, she was really sick with her gallbladder and kept having gallbladder attacks. And Lyme attacks the gallbladder. That's an organ that Lyme uh, really attacks. And so the first question my doctor asked was whether or not I had a gallbladder and I had had my gallbladder removed. And, and um, there I have three siblings and my mom and all, all three of my siblings have Lyme disease. But I have the most serious case. I have chronic neurological Lyme disease and um, and my siblings have varying uh, degrees of symptoms. Um, I have two siblings that are doing great and, and one that um, just hasn't felt great. And then um, I pass Lyme to uh, my son and he uh, contracted it from me. I have never had a tick bite, um, but both both of my parents were bit by ticks growing up. They grew up here in Utah, uh, one in eastern Utah and one in central Utah uh, in the country. And so uh, in the area that my mom grew up in eastern Utah, there have been three people who have passed away from Lyme disease and uh, and there are several more that I'm aware of that that have Lyme. And the hard thing about Lyme is you're not just dealing with Lyme disease. What happens is Lyme typically comes with different co-infections and two co-infections that are really challenging to diagnose and and tree are uh, Babesia and Bartonella, and I have both. And uh, Babesia uh, is, uh, creates tremor, tremors, memory issues, uh, seizures. There's just a huge laundry list of items. Bartonella um, creates a lot of cysts, uh, it creates a lot of pain in your shoulders and neck, incredibly painful headaches. And, um, I have a big cyst on the side of my head, uh, right now that is shrinking because of treatment. So, uh, it's just really challenging to diagnose Lyme disease, um, the testing is very inadequate. Um, there are two main tests that they use that are um, the main test that most doctors are aware of is the Western blot. And then there's uh, a test called Igenix, which is not covered by most insurance. Um, it is it ranges in price depending on how uh, in-depth you want to go uh, with your testing. And then there's a, there's a urine test that is currently going through uh, FDA approval. And hopefully by next year uh, that will be out in that. Uh, the hope is, is that will be the most accurate test. And um, and will give people uh, accurate readings on whether or not they have Lyme. The hard thing with the Western blot is it can give you a false negative. So you can have Lyme disease and have no bands show up on one day and then be tested another day 
and have five bands show up. It's just a really random test. And uh, the doctor that I see um, has chosen not to go necessarily by test results. They do a lot of testing, uh, blood tests, but they also do more of a clinical diagnosis uh, and go off of symptoms and they've just learned how to read Lyme and it's gnarly co-infections. <laughs>